Okay, welcome back. Here we are in my hardwood library at the back of my container, and I'm selecting some two inch thick walnut. This is left over from a table I made in July. You guys might remember I made a, a table with two lathe stanchions at the bottom, and I bought several planks, and this is what was left over. And these are about, I guess about 36 inches long. They just happen to be this length, and you'll see how the, the size worked out perfectly. And so now I am splitting the wood into thirds or resawing it. So I cut the actual width to close to six inches so that I could then cut it from both sides on the table saw. Because I'm gonna mill this wood all the way up, both sides and everything. So to split it all up and to pass it through my planer, I had to mill it down to these various sizes. But ultimately, the, the various pieces of wood become part of the graphic of the finished piece because I make two floating side tables and I make them the same exact way. And as it turns out, I used up exactly all this wood with just a couple of small scraps left over. I really thought I was milling up more than I needed, but of course it's always good to mill up more than you need so you're not searching for a piece. And so now I'm just planing both sides. And a funny thing, I had those pieces with the, with the knot in them. And you saw that in the very first shot. And Taylor, came into the shop and she said, oh, I love the pieces with the knot. I was trying to figure out a way to cut around them to get rid of them, but when she realized she liked them, I saved them to figure out how to incorporate them into the design. I'm making two floating nightstands that will hang on the wall, and Taylor came up with the concept of these. And here you see I'm just selecting the wood. I don't have a joiner, so what I did in that previous shot was I just passed them through the table saw several times, taking off just a little bit at a time. And now I'm going to use splines to connect these pieces. It was a little too skinny to use for the domino joiner, so I ended up just using splines. And you'll see I'm cutting the splines there in walnut. All this wood is a half inch thick. So there you see how the spline works. So Taylor came up with this concept for these two floating night tables. Years ago I made this puzzle box where everything was beveled and two U-shapes slid together and you couldn't see the seam. And so she said, wouldn't it be great if you made tables like that? And that was the idea for these tables. And now I'm just gluing them together. When you make these splines, I made them kind of tight, so I had to really squish the glue out of there. And a good way to get rid of that glue is to just rub dried sawdust on it. it soaks it up, because the minute you try and wash it off, it just moves all over the place. And now those were bowing when I put the clamps on them, so I just screwed those battens just straight down to the table. And I actually made sure I washed all the glue off, or at least rubbed the glue off with the sawdust after a couple of squeeze outs. I took it off and then put them back down. And so there are my two dried up glue ups, and I'm using a card scraper to get rid of the glue. And now I'm breaking up for my cuts. Now I'm going to basically make two waterfall type tables where the grain is going to wrap completely around three sides. And so I'm just mapping out my stuff there, and I'm cutting off the ends. And once I get the two pieces the same size, I have to try and remember to do all the cuts anticipatory that are going to become rabbits and, and glue areas. And so I do my bevels. You'll see how they come into place in a bit, or my rabbits there. And I forgot to do the bevel before I split it up. So now the first cut I should have taken was my bevel, but I was so anxious I cut it all apart first. And I'm using those heavy weights because that piece of wood had a little bow in it and I wanted to make sure that it cut flat. So this wood actually glued nice and flat so I didn't need that heavy weight on there. And so now you notice I cut it off of what will be the top and now these are the two sides for each table. So it's really important that I keep everything in order. And there you can see the scrap and then ultimately what I wanted to do. And again, this is the cut I should have made at first, but I wasn't thinking, so I had to tape everything back together and then make that cut again. That's the bevel that's going to accept the space for the draw front. And now I'm cutting the notches for the spline, and there you see the notches for the spline. I just kept the saw tilted at that same exact 45, and after I did the bevel, I just flipped it over and then cut in the spline groove. So it's really easy to do, in fact. 
Now the glue up ended up being a little bit of a difficult challenge here because I realized I can only glue up one half at a time and that was because I wanted to be extra sure that I stayed square. And I have these steel angles that I picked up at a garage sale many years ago and you see they're clamped in place already but you'll see me do the next part of the glue up. So I only had two of those so I wanted to be sure that I took my time and glued each side cleanly. And I had a dry fit one side while the other side was glued up so that I could put these clamps on. So the left side of the screen is not glued. The right side obviously is. And so now that that's dried, I flip it over and those are the steel angle irons. And you'll see how they come into play here. My spline was a little thick. I had to take off a couple of scrapes there. And like I said, this was a messy glue up. I, I kind of was a I wasn't anticipating a few things, but ultimately I just took my time and I didn't try and do all the joints at one time. I just did one, then went away and did something different, then came back and did the other one. So I did four glue ups. Right there you can see how the grain is starting to waterfall around the, the shape. Ultimately it came out really nice. And so I had a clamp up in each direction. You see the glue squeezing out there, down and across. And the spline was nice and tight, it kept everything perfectly aligned. But I did need to make sure those steel angles were in there to maintain that 90 degrees. And now this is uh, gluing up of the second one. And just like I said before, when you do something multiple times, you go to school on the first few, and by the time you did the last one, you know exactly what you need to do, but you're done. So the very last one is always the most perfect one. And this here is the very last one. I was an expert there, after three of them. Sometimes you say to yourself, why do I have so many clamps? I'll never use them, and then suddenly you run out. And now I'm getting ready to make the drawers. And I'm going to use the new Rockler Dado Folding Set. And uh, there it is. It creates a notch in the plywood right up to the veneer so that I could then fold and kind of makes a, a nice miter lock. And it took a little tweaking, a couple of sample cuts, and actually only two sample cuts until I had it right on the money. And uh, you see a film crew there filming me for Patreon. I'm going to be in an upcoming Patreon spot. So <laughs> I got so wrapped up in them shooting me, I completely forgot I was making this video. And at the last minute, I threw the GoPro up in the air there. And the way this works is you cut right up to the veneer, so it's important to put tape so you don't go all the way through. And one thing I did realize using this small table saw for this job, you notice that the cuts flap around. So you see there I use tape to keep the cut from flapping. Because once you cut it, now it's free to fall. And if everything's facing down, gravity's going to pull it down. Here's a detail of what's happening. You can see that there. That gets cut out, and then it leaves room for a glue joint. It just folds up and you have to cut from either side of the fence. So that's why you notice me move it around. You cut from either side of the fence, two cuts in one direction, two cuts in the perpendicular direction from either side of the fence. And there it is. It went together nice. I just threw a couple of pin nails in it and then a couple clamps just to drive it home. This is my second drawer. And these actually were the, the the second and third that I ever made. I only made one before I made those two. And before I took the, the data stack apart, I made a whole bunch of little drawers. And now here, this is the bottom, and this is all solid walnut, so I wanted to make sure the bottom was the same configuration of walnut, so that in case this tube of wood would breathe, it would all breathe the same way. And there I am just fading the spline in. Looks kind of nice there, the spline on that, that V. Second. And here I have a chip. I lost it. At one point I realized I was missing a piece, so I have to splice in a little chip. I try to find something the similar color off of the scrap wood. It took a second to get it to fit into the back of that angle there, but now it's the next morning and I let it dry real good. And I work it in. And then to the untrained eye, it just looks like a little piece of natural light or wood. And now I'm sanding in all my joints, everything's nice and dry. 
and that bevel was very sharp and susceptible to chip it still is even after everything is done but especially there sometimes it's nice to make a nice thin sanding block so that you see me make there out of the some scrap wood and I'm using the bandy clamps to glue up the top of the open plywood there in both directions and now this is the back remember early on I made those dados or those rabbits I should say this pieces of plywood pop right into those rabbits I cut in the very beginning and I epoxied the back in and I made sure the epoxy was squished into either side of the joint because that plywood is going to carry the floating shelf and you notice how I just used that sanding block there you can back the video up and watch what I did there by keeping that sanding block level across all edges of the drawer I ensure that the top of the drawer is all sanded perfectly flat and now I'm putting in these these slide rails and uh, you would have assumed I would use concealed sliders but because I wanted to learn the technique of using the the folding dado stack that prohibits you from being able to make a drawer that would be able to use undermounts so that's the big reason I don't use undermounts is because I wanted the experience with the dado stack and now my draw faces, you see where those knots come into place, and I had to splice them because it was a little bit wider than six inches. And I just tried to do a little bit of a grain match. And now what you see me doing now is counting, cutting the bevels for the draw faces after my splice is dried. Now you can see the 45 and 45 come together. And I just have to keep tweaking it a little bit. And I keep checking it and tweaking it and checking it, and I get it to where I feel it's really really spot on. There's no way I'm going to be able to avoid a little gap. I need the gap because it's not getting glued together. There I just cut a little finger notch so when you reach up underneath the draw face. And this is the way I like to attach loose draw faces. I glue them in place first. And once they're glued in place, then I put in a few screws. I, if I have to, I put in two big, three big globs of glue. I like using polyurethane because it's easy to maintenance. If you get a drink ring or a scratch, you just sand it out and paint it again. It almost always matches just like it did before. Walnut, though, is very susceptible to fading in the sun, so you've got to be careful you paint it with a good proper paint if you're going to have walnut just sitting in the sun. It turns orange. And uh, there you see my spike push stick. This is the template for the mounting bracket, or rather, should I say, for mounting to the wall. This is a template for the holes. So by using the same template for both of them, and I'm gonna use that same template to make the holes on the wall, everything lines up. And it's important to drill the holes above center. If you drill them at or below center, you'd have susceptibility of ripping off the wall. Now I make my level line, and I use my mounting plate up to that level line. And here I'm only drilling center holes because this is just temporary because I'm not able to mount this where it goes before the video gets published so I just want to show you a sample so I only put just the one screw in but if I was using all three screws you would see how using that mounting plate would make everything line up and now here we go and you see those soft closers pull in really nice I was happy with the way this came out in the beginning there when the wood was cupped I was a little nervous I wasn't going to get a good joint but ultimately I just forced everything into into straight thanks for watching along I hope you enjoyed this and get inspired to make a pair like this for yourself thank you Rockler